Hello, my name is Ming Huan Xu. I am the head of strings, also artist faculty in violin at CCPA. I think during this extremely difficult and challenging time, self-care is so important, both physically and mentally. For me, um, I recently adopted a new puppy. So taking the walks with my puppy really relaxes me. So every day we take a few walks around the block and I actually enjoy the cold weather, the snow, and um, I find that it's very relaxing for me and I listen to music very often on those walks. And for mentally, I think that during this challenging time, we often experience roller coasters emotionally. Um, I think the key to deal with it is to actually be okay with having those days where you feel that um, things are difficult and you have difficult time dealing with it. Also, please keep stretching and uh, because we're sitting in front of computers and in front of our phone and definitely playing our instrument, we are doing repetitive motions all the time. Very often during this time, we feel sore because of lack of movement. Uh, we're all cooped up inside. So it's very important to get enough activity during the day. Um, stay away from the computer whenever we can. Take short breaks from it at least and stretch and drink plenty of water. Hi, my name is Winston Choi and I am the head of the piano program here at Roosevelt University. I want to talk about health and wellness um, as it relates to how we often are seated, staring at a screen, uh, staring at scores, in the case of us pianists, but I could probably speak on behalf of many musicians, we're seated all day. So a topic for another day, perhaps somebody else will touch upon this, is getting outdoors and exercising. But I want to talk about how we can maximize our um, particular environment, the way we are seated at the computer. And I noticed this first and foremost um, amongst myself when I would spend long hours in front of the computer that I was slowly and gradually drawn more and more and more forward, craning my neck, right? And losing my sense of self and being so aware of what it was that I was looking at and gross in that, that I lost the sense of balance within me. Um, so the, simply the awareness of that uh, is, is really important. You know, know, know the trends and the tendencies of what all of this kind of remote learning can do. Uh, the way I was using my mouse, instead of locking my hand on a fixed surface, you know, try to sometimes use the mouse up against a wall or hold, hold a book in a hand and you run the mouse that way, right? If you're using a, what do you call it, the track pads, mix it up, different fingers, different hands. You know, we all need more variety within our routine and it's just gaining that kind of awareness at our computers in front of the screen, the same way we, we've we hopefully become hyper aware of ourselves in a relationship to our musical instruments. I think we can extend that to our working environment. Um, so that's my thoughts for the day. So take care, everybody. Hi there, I'm Karen Bazarak and I teach cello at Roosevelt University. We really need to be mindful of ourselves and our bodies when we are musicians listening to our bodies, feeling if something feels a little off, chances are we can usually keep injuries from happening and prolong our careers. I've had multiple injuries in my career and I, it's usually because I haven't listened to my body and I haven't stopped because I've been worried about a deadline or worried about some competition coming up. But we really need to be advocates for ourselves. There are so many wonderful resources in the city of Chicago, whether it's doctors, whether it's different alternative medicines, whether it's even something like Pilates, which I love to do to help work on keeping my body balanced. Of course, as musicians, we hold tension on different sides. We utilize different parts of our body differently and strengthening and equaling out our bodies can really help prolong your career in a healthy way. Hope this helps. Hi, I'm Linda Berna, the Associate Dean and Director of the Music Conservatory. And I wanna thank Jade Garcia and the amazing CAL staff for creating this video collage for Health and Wellness Week. Trying to deal with the pandemic, I found myself and maybe you found 
this too, constantly torn between figuring out how to get as much accomplished as I could and not wanting to accept this environment as the new normal. And I finally realized that struggle was the gap between present and future when I couldn't recognize the world I thought I knew. So what I consciously think about now is maintaining a realistic outlook, but working hard to protect and sustain optimism. We just can't have a lot of experiences and opportunities that we used to enjoy. Things are what they are right now, and all we can do is figure out how to do our best in any given situation. That's realistic, but optimism is critical. And here are some things I do to feel hopeful and happy and productive, and I hope if you try them that they make you feel the same. First, read as much as you can for pleasure. I read a little bit of fiction every day from different styles, time periods, and authors. And here are some of the books I read this fall and winter that I heartily recommend to you. The Searchers by Tana French, The Lost Book of Adana Moreau by Michael Zapata, Sweet Francaise by Irene Nemirovsky, and The Memory of Love by Aminata Forna. Books are great teachers and great connectors to all times and spaces. Second, embrace biodiversity. If you can have a pet, that's wonderful. We have three cats and they comfort me so much. But where I work at home is right next to a window looking out into the treetops. And now I intently watch the birds in my yard too. Cardinals, robins, sparrows, chickadees, wrens, goldfinches, woodpeckers, flickers, orioles, even hawks. So many beautiful and interesting creatures that were there all along probably, and I wasn't paying attention. And now we're feeding and caring for them and they see us too. That's all we have to do sometimes is pay attention. At home, outside your house, in the streets, in the park, there can be life even if there aren't many people. Living among and caring for and interacting with other life forms to think and act in very unhuman ways is positive for us because it reminds us that there are other intelligences in the world. Animals open our eyes to a different way of being and knowing, other perspectives, other solutions that help them operate. Coexisting and cooperating with other forms of consciousness serves very well to keep us humble about how much we actually know about the world. And finally, take some time every day not to do anything. 20 or 30 minutes to take the pressure off yourself. Look out the window, play solitaire, watch something silly on TV, take a walk without a purpose, let your mind wander and relax and let your thoughts flow. It's not a waste of time and it's not laziness. It's really important. You need mental rest in a way that's different from sleep. Take time to just be. And every once in a while, something really interesting pops into your head. These three things, reading and interacting with the animal world and daydreaming, take you inside yourself and outside yourself at the same time. And that's what nurtures your creativity. So when the world opens up and feels safer, you'll be ready to be a part of it again. Hello, everybody. I'm John Ye. And I teach clarinet, orchestral studies, and chamber music in the Music Conservatory of CCPA. And I'm here today to share with you some of my thoughts for uh, Health and Wellness Week and um, some of my personal routines for staying healthy. I also play in the Chicago Symphony Orchestra. That's my main activity. And in the past year, that activity has been drastically changed. With the COVID uh, pandemic, we cannot play for audiences live in the hall anymore. So we've been uh, changing our routine and having uh, only concerts for video cameras and uh, with no audiences. Uh, that puts a lot of stress on our uh, mental system as well as physical. Um, just performing in general is quite stressful and requires good care of our physical body as well as our uh, mental state. And 
one of the best gifts that we have is good health. So one of my main focuses is to preserve my good health and to enhance my good health by uh, eating well, by sleeping well, by getting good exercise, and basically maintaining a balance in my life. I, I would say that if I had a motto, it would be balance is the key to life. And so what I would do in terms of maintaining that balance is, is to uh, get all of those aspects of my life into balance so one thing doesn't completely overtake everything. For example, if there's a performance coming up, make time to take a rest in my practice routine. Um, really make time to get some good food in, uh, in me to nourish me and make time to exercise. These days I've been able to do um, uh, Pilates lessons online and other exercise like yoga classes and things like that are available online and I think that's an important part of keeping one's physical body uh, in shape and in good health. When the weather's good, I'll take a walk outside. And of course, these days, try to avoid contact with people that might uh, be transmitting any viruses. So important to stay masked when outside and wash hands often. Make sure you don't uh, pick up any bugs that you don't want. And um, I would say just maintaining the balance, doing the work that uh, you have to do in uh, amounts that are manageable, keeping an open mind. We have to be very flexible in, uh, all the time and uh, really paying attention and being a nice person to everybody. I think having a, a positive, um, open attitude is, is very important to, to staying healthy, to hear what other people have to say and, and um, be open about it. And especially when you're a musician working in a uh, situation of an ensemble, you have to have a good give and take and communication. Communication is very important. Keep your physical self, your mental self uh, as healthy as possible and communicate openly and be uh, honest and be just a good person. I would say that's my advice for Health and Wellness Week, and um, I wish you all the best of health, and be well. Hopefully we can see each other and uh, have performances that everybody will be able to attend soon. Thank you so much. Hi CCPA family, Michael Weissholms here, head of the Woodwind Program and artist teacher of saxophone at the Chicago College of Performing Arts. I know it's been a really difficult time for all of us during this past 10, 11, 12 months, however long this pandemic has been going on, and I hope that you're all staying safe and taking care of yourselves. During this week, as we sort of look at health and wellness, I just thought I would give you a little bit of things that I know have been uh, working for me, and also uh, know that we've all been struggling through all of this. So I have found during these last uh, 10 months or 11 months or so that making sure I'm taking care of myself physically. So working out, I work out five days a week and uh, try to go for runs and make sure that I'm taking care of my body. Um, I've been doing yoga one or two days a week on top of that. It's just a way to sort of stretch and breathe and relax and get my body sort of back in order. Um, I've been reading a lot. I have found that reading has been a really good way to sort of occupy my mind and the space that I normally would be potentially performing or interacting with other people and I like many people have been allowing my husband and myself have been allowing ourselves to have our little virtual hangouts um, with our friends and families to sort of see one another and reconnect with them those things have been really important to me during this time because otherwise I think that all of us are, are struggling with the realization that we we can't perform in front of people and we can't see people and we can't interact with them in the same way so taking care of myself and making sure that I'm mentally stable and physically stable has been a really good uh, thing for myself. So I, I hope 
that all of you are taking care of yourselves. Make sure that you're getting enough sleep and eating and be kind to yourself and realize that you're going to have good days and bad days. And that's human nature and it's okay. And please reach out to your faculty and your friends and your colleagues to see if there's ways that we can help one another because we're all in this together. So I wish you all the best and I hope that all of you are staying safe and I hope to see all of you, if I've even never met you, I hope to see all of you at some point in time in the near future, so thank you. Hi, my name is Nadine Gomes. I teach in the Theater Conservatory. I teach private voice, ensemble singing, group voice, and pop rock styles for musical theater. I think that performing artists have a unique challenge when it comes to maintaining a productive and positive mindset about our work. We're always striving for excellence. We practically examine our work under a microscope. So sometimes it's really hard to see our own growth and progress. It's easy to find areas that we want to improve, but we rarely give ourselves credit for things that are going well. So this is my suggestion. When you are practicing and you're doing a run of your piece or even just a section of your piece, before you critique it to hell and find all the things you want to fix about it, stop and find three things that you think went well during that pass. You thought about your breathing more, you fix that note that you were getting wrong, that the phrasing is better, you feel more emotionally connected to the piece. There's bound to be something that went well, lots of things that went well. And we need to acknowledge our own successes even when they feel small or they're just brief moments that felt good. We also need to acknowledge compliments. It's so easy to dismiss or mistrust compliments, but the fact of the matter is sometimes other people can see our growth and artistry in a way that we can't because we're just too close to it. So compliments matter and they matter just as much as negative critique. And if all you are looking for is criticism of your work, you risk losing the joy and the passion that brought you there in the first place. So if you're in, if you're practicing and you're finding yourself in like a really negative headspace and you're having a hard time getting out of it, sometimes you just gotta walk away for a little bit, find something that makes you smile, makes you laugh. Uh, for me, go to Mood Changer, his cute animal videos, like this one. Come on, dude. Here we go. Oh. There you go. I mean, you know, you can't be in too mad, too bad a mood after that. So, find your cute animal video equivalent, and sometimes take a break, find some time to laugh, smile, and then get back to work. So, wishing you some productive practicing and good mental health. Hi CCPA, this is Elise in the theater department coming to you with a couple of my mental health tips. I'd say one of the big ones is listening to how my mental energy is flowing. So whether that has to do with when I sleep or how long I try to sleep or what activities I do during the day, really try to listen to what my body needs and if I can, try to follow that. So that's turning off technology at a certain time when I know I'm going to be heading to bed so that I can shut my brain down or choosing to do a certain kind of activity at a certain point in the day. Like I'd rather get up early and do something than stay up late and do it. Recognizing that we all have different ways that we approach that and you should listen to your body. And a second one is finding intentional comfort, carving out little moments in the day where you choose to do things that make you feel good, whether that's curling up with hot chocolate or sitting with someone like this guy. Something that gives you um, a little bit of peace and joy and that making time for that is important. And the last I'd say is making sure you ask for help. Know who you can turn to when you need that help and be honest about what's going on with you. Reach out, we all care about you. 
Stay well.